Okay, so this is the uh, a session for me to I just want to share what I have studied uh, during the MCO period to see how we can actually do online lectures and what are the important things in the online lectures, uh, doing online lectures. Now, um, in past few days, uh, including yesterday, the with the talk with TNC uh, AA, which is on the synchronous as, and asynchronous learning. I think everyone attended the session yesterday. So mostly actually covered there already, but I just, um, but I already prepared the slide. So we just go through it and hopefully we can finish within 45 minutes. After that, um, then we'll have a, a Q&A session. So um, the first section for this um, session will be on introduction to online lecturing. I think everyone will know that what is online lectures already, but here I still want to, for those that don't know, uh, we will talk about more on synchronous and asynchronous online learning. So synchronous online learning is is where uh, students and lecturers are required to be online at the same time. This is for face-to-face -face learning. Okay. So in synchronized synchronous online learning. So we actually, we're going to use online platforms such as Webex, the one that we are using now, Zoom, Microsoft Team, or Google uh, Classroom. There are different types of platforms that are available for us to do online lecturing. And for asynchronous online, uh, asynchronous learning will be where the instructor provide the reading materials and all the recorded lectures Oh, sorry, the typo there. Lectures, tests, or assignments for the students. The students can obtain the material through online or a hard copy sent to the student. So it means that most of it is actually done offline, not uh, live. Okay, the student will study with their own pace within the given time frame. So it's not like synchronous. Synchronous learning, online learning will be like we're having our lecture. Just instead of physical lecture in a classroom, we're going to have it online, live, like what we have now. And where our asynchronous is where we provide the material, including recorded videos and etc. We give to the students and ask the student to study by themselves. So there are pros and cons for this uh, synchronous and asynchronous online learning. So first we'll talk about what is the advantages and disadvantages of online synchronous learning. Of, uh, of course, uh, for the advantages, uh, the online synchronous learning is more convenient where we can actually have face-to-face um, -face session. We don't need to be in a same room, especially in a situation like the COVID-19, uh, the MCO for the COVID-19 now, okay? And it's uh, also more, more cost effective. This cost effective is mostly um, talking about the rental of the place, the management of the venue, and etc. The In terms of pre preparation and the others are still the same, but in terms of transportation and venue, it is more cost effective. And this synchronous learning will also provide uh, immediate feedback, which is what asynchronous learning is lack of. Another advantage of uh, online synchronous learning is highly motivating. Of course, this depends on the speaker. If the speaker is a very good and in interesting speaker, speaker, then um, it will highly motivate the participants. Online synchronous learning also fosters a sense of community, which you are allowing the participants and the lecturers to interact as a whole. You can see like in a classroom. So more social interaction can be done uh, in online. Of course, there are disadvantages. The 
one major disadvantages is uh, the online synchronous learning is strictly based on technology. It's a technology-based uh, event where we need to use uh, not say sophisticated, sophisticated, but uh, you may need some proper training to fully understand how to use the uh, platform. But of course, uh, currently with the Webex, uh, Zoom, and others, uh, most of it are already met simple for all the user so uh, just by one of you click you can actually use it but however to set up for the first time user you still need some exploring to do another disadvantages sorry i have forgot to do the typo there so another disadvantages is on the dim on the internet connection so we have a big issues with our students that especially from the rural areas where internet connection become an issue for them to have online lecture sessions. Uh, another, the third disadvantages will be on the local time barriers. Uh, for Unimas, I don't think this is a big problem, but for other places, if we are doing cross uh, border, means that for our international students that not in Malaysia, so they were having problems to cope with our time. As uh, 11 o'clock in Kuching will be equivalent to 11 o'clock night time in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And online synchronous learning may need a careful planning. It's not just, uh, we just record the video. Sometimes we need to check on the, what can be, what should be do, done and what cannot be done. Okay, and it's a challenging, uh, it's a challenging matter for lecturer that with uh, poor social skills, not only social skills. I think most of lecturers, we can talk in front of uh, a big class, a huge class, we can present in a big class, but talking to a computer uh, in front of a computer, talking to the computer is a bit awkward, like what I'm doing now. So it is a bit um, yeah, challenging. Okay, so I'm actually like uh, talking to myself now. Okay, although I know there's a lot of people behind the uh, the screen. So these are the advantages and disadvantages. Agree again. Sorry for the typo. <clears throat> Next will be the advantages and disadvantages of online asynchronous learning. Now, um, I'll be talking more on asynchronous learning because uh, I'm actually uh, more on providing offline videos for students due to our uh, situations. <clears throat> So the, the advantages of uh, online asynchronous learning will be the student will have complete control of their studies. Okay, They can study when they want, uh, when they think they can start study. Okay, And it's uh, respectful to personal learning pace. Everyone have a different learning uh, curve. Uh, they learn differently. So by having uh, asynchronous learning, the students can actually learn by themselves and then they can pick up the pace by itself. No need to compare with the other people. Okay, uh, convenient. Okay, the convenient here will be more on, we no need to limit the students to be in one location at one at any time. Okay, they can study when they think is best for them to study. Uh, less social obstacle, they don't need to meet with other people, they just need to study their own, the material that given to them. Uh, interactive regardless of uh, location and time barriers. There will be some small interaction between uh, 
by, by studying on the online materials, especially between the instructors and the student. So there is no location or time barriers. You don't need to limit anyone at any place or any time. Well, the disadvantages, again, sorry for the typo. So the major disadvantages of having an asynchronous learning, the major disadvantages of having asynchronous learning is uh, the lack of instant feedback. So as we know, in asynchronous learning, we can actually have a direct feedback like in a physical classroom. But in asynchronous, uh, we pass the information or pass the material to the student and the student will doing will study by themselves. And thus, they can't actually have a direct interaction. They can't ask questions. They can't get your feedback immediately. Okay. And also due to that, you will also have a uh, lack of personal interaction. There will be no one-to-one -one interaction. Uh, you can't monitor them one by one in any uh, all the times. What you can do is you can actually just uh, when the students send the material back to you, then you can actually see what is the content. So there will be a lack of personal interaction there. Uh, no live collaboration and real-time activities. So since that is actually doing offline and you send the material to the students. So the student will not be able to have a uh, teamwork and uh, collaboration uh, on the spot. They will also have to do that on offline. So there will be less on the teamwork. So for, uh, for us that actually having uh, teamwork as one of the CLO, then we may need to revise on how this collaboration can be done offline and online can cause lack of motivation. This is more due to the fifth one, which is require self-discipline. So we pass the information, the study material to the student. Student may not doing anything until the final end of the submission. So due to personal uh, motivation. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of the online asynchronous learning. Again, sorry for the typo on the disadvantages. So after going through the online, uh, the asynchronous and as the advantages and disadvantages of asynchronous and synchronous learning. So what are the major challenge that UNIMAS or us as lecturers We'll be having to implement online synchronous learning. First, time constraint. Now, um, initially, uh, in TAM, our target is to limit the online synchronous learning or remote teaching about 30% of our syllabus. But due to COVID-19, now we, uh, we have to do full online lecture until the end of the year and maybe next year as well the one up to the kpt to decide okay but due to the short constraint we are need, we need to prepare the material to do online uh, to prepare ourselves to be fully online to give lectures uh, student access to computers for online lectures this is one of the this is one of the major challenge as well Although that we know that a lot of students actually have computers, as most of parents also have computers. However, due to this COVID-19, there's a lot of uh, school actually require their students to actually have computers. I have some students that only have one computer at home. Now they are fighting for to get hold of the computers to do their own homework. So just imagine if you have five brothers and sisters and you only have one computer at home. So who should be given the priority to study? The next challenge will be the internet access for students, especially in the rural area. So especially like in Sarawak, in rural area, we have um, a lot of places that doesn't have a good internet connection. So to implement online synchronous learning, uh, this will be the major challenge. How we ensure every student are given fair access to the learning materials. Lack of training and experience for the lecturer. This is something new. 
although some of us already done it, but uh, it's still something require us to explore and then make ourselves uh, norm to the um, situations. So due to these um, main challenges, my personal preference of uh, having online lecture will be more on uh, provide asynchronous learning means that we will uh, provide the videos and also um, to put it online. So utilizing Elip, which is a, a already a ready platform for us to share our um, share our material to the student would be one of the a better choice. So the next issue will be how to what how to actually um, conduct a lecture. So <clears throat> prepare the video to how to prepare the video, uh, the lecture, lecture video. So um, after surveying all the different type of uh, online lecture that are available, uh, there are, I noticed that there are different ways of to conduct a class on a screen. Why on a screen, uh, regardless is uh, synchronous or asynchronous, there are few ways that we can actually conduct our class. The first method is as seen in the um, seen in the pictures. This is uh, the easiest way for us to conduct, uh, to, to record uh, or to do our online lectures. So it means that we are doing, uh, the lecturer can just do as, uh, as usual to conduct a lecture, lecture uh, in front of a class. The only difference is um, you doesn't have any participants. You only have a uh, camera in front of you. So this will be the easiest way, but the setup will be a bit complicated uh, where you may need to use a better device rather than just a, a webcam or a, a camera on your laptop to do the recording. The second method is actually, a second way to conduct the class on the screen is actually just by sharing the um, sharing the slide so you just record your screen there's a lot of screen recorder in the market where you can actually can record the screen and then uh, annotate your voice onto the screen uh, onto the recording this can be done using uh, microsoft powerpoint as well but today we are not going to explain on how to do the recording okay so this is actually a slide that I a slide screen that I actually uh, capture from YouTube. So you've noticed that it's just a normal slides, a uh, full screen PowerPoint uh, with the voiceover. The third method is actually by direct manipulation, where you can direct. Uh, there are two. Uh, example here. The example on the left side of the screen is actually a writing pad where you can actually write directly on the um, screen. Uh, you can see the, uh, the writing on the screen. So this method is very good when you are actually teaching on maths, especially in computer science we, where we have a lot of, uh, we have some maths classes. So this method will be very good in uh, helping uh, to, to demonstrate the mathematical skill. The, the right hand uh, the right hand side will be screen capture on uh, how we use software. So this will be very and uh, also typing. So this screen manipulation will be very good in uh, for the right hand side will be very good if we want to do a lab, a computer lab, or we want to do a demonstration of codings. Of course, there's the last one, uh, which is similar like what we have now. You can see the slides and also a small screen with um, the speakers or with the instructors first there. This is similar to the second method, second way. The only difference is you can see the person, then you know that 
is a person that actually talk at the back of the video. So it will give more um, social, uh, a friendly touch on your presentation, not so um, cool. So uh, I would like to, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of best practices for online to do online lectures. However, I would like to um, focus on five key things that um, will be important for us when we do we, our online lectures. The first one is to keep video short. Um, I have attended some online lectures from YouTube or anything, uh, which almost two hours. So most of the time, I will actually not on the video. I will just listen to the to the speakers. Why? Because uh, taking a video, you seeing a person in front of there for two hours in your room with your computers. So most of the time you get bored. So you will not be concentrating. So that's why it's a good practice to keep your lectures short, uh, preferable uh, 15 to 20 minutes max per topic. Okay, shorter is better is um, to give the ex maximum exposure, the less um, uh, to, to reduce the student to getting bored during the uh, lecture times. And also to make eye contact. So in the, when you're doing your videos or when you are actually uh, doing the online lectures, so you need to make eye contact. Of course, in during a physical time, a physical class, we can actually make eye contact by scanning through the floor. However, in a lecture video or a lecture live stream, you can't do that because you don't know where your uh, participants are looking at now. Some participant is not even on the screen, but they are listening. So how to provide the eye contact just by looking at the camera. If you're using a laptop camera like me, it's much more easier. Looking at the screen is similar on as looking into the camera. But of course, your eye level will be different. I think you can notice the eye level is looking down. Okay. Um, speak and record in a quiet place. So use or use a voice cancellation microphone. Now to do the video, I'm actually going to survey some um, mic. Uh, actually go and buy some mic, uh, uh, a standalone mic, and also a headset mic. And eventually now, I'm actually using, hopefully it's okay, I'm actually using my laptop only. So I noticed that my laptop actually have voice cancellations, which uh, will reduce some of the uh, noise, uh, the unwanted noise, like the fan and the cooler. My cooler is actually quite, quite loud now. So you can test, uh, you better test the mic first uh, before you actually do the recording to make sure that your, to do the setup and then do the recording and make sure that the lecture is, or the video is, the voice quality is actually good. Now, as um, one, uh, Mr. Chakiman said in one of the session, in online lectures or online lecture video, um, the voice quality is much more important than the video itself because in the lecture, even though the um, image is very clear, if the voice is unclear, then it's not really that useful. The fourth one, make your presentation interactive and interesting. I'm not sure how interesting is my presentation now. I'm still thinking. Uh, but I uh, will try to make the um, make the presentation interactive and interesting so that the participants will actually focus on your video and the content of the video. Of course, one of the ways to doing this is go back to the number one, which is to keep your video short. Last one is to provide support reading materials for your participants or students. Now, um, the better 
um, way of doing it is to provide a manuscript or reading from any of the textbooks and you require the student to refer back to the references on your lectures content. Why? Because online lecture is short. Most of the time we just capture the crucial items and then give uh, provide to the students. So the student may need to go uh, find some other references if they don't understand the video or the, they don't understand the lecture besides asking from you. And we know that Asian students, most of them, they prefer to look for their own references before they come to us lecturer. So now, um, all for on the online lectures, the uh, best practice, the type of online lectures we, or video that we can use. So in the next section, we are going to talk about on sharing lectures, lecture video in Elite. So as I mean, uh, on as for the synchronous online learning, we can use uh, WebEx or Zoom or and of course in Unimas, each academy already been provided the account for WebEx, and it can support up to one thousand participants. So it is better choice that we actually use WebEx, or unless you have your own Zoom personal account, uh, else then WebEx will be a better choice or you want to use Google or the others open source platform. So the next section will be on sharing the lecture video uh, that we capture for asynchronous uh, to put inside Elip so that uh, we use Elip as a dissemination form for the re uh, teaching materials. So there is actually a uh, main three methods of uh, sharing a lecture video in Elip. The first one is actually uh, by external link. Uh, second one is embedded the video in label or on dashboard. And the last one is embedded video in a patch off. Before that, uh, since that we are going to have a lot of these lecture videos and some of us are thinking of having um, students presentation via video as well. So we ask the student to actually provide a video presentation and upload it into Ellipse. So if we, if we upload all the videos inside our Ellipse server, um, don't, I think it will be a very heavy task for the storage and also for the network. That's why I would personally advise um, the lecturer to actually put their videos in other places rather than inside the uh, Ellipse server. And if I'm not mistaken, the Ellipse server currently can only support up to the upload for 800 meg of uh, materials at one time. So if you are doing a very nice video or very lengthy video, uh, your file size most probably will not be able to upload into Ellipse. So a better choice is actually to upload in other uh, uh, online storage. Uh, my uh, preference will be on YouTube. Some of you guys may don't want, may not want to share your video on YouTube, but YouTube is a very good place to actually store all your lecture video. Beside, uh, it's open access. Uh, when you upload, they will do a compression for you as well. So your regardless of the internet quality of your participants, they can actually uh, control the quality and also the uh, uh, different uh, file size. So I would personally, I will actually upload it to YouTube. Of course, you can set it to not uh, to be private and uh, not private uh, to be not um, not publicly available. So you can. So I'm going to share my screen on the to show how we actually can do the publish to publish lecture video in Elip. Here I already have examples. We have of example for each of these. This is actually based on uh, online video on introduction to HTML tutorial, which I can I not done by me. I found on YouTube. So this is a YouTube page. So when you after you upload, 
your YouTube page or this uh, online storage, what you can do is you can actually embed the video inside. Uh, you put and put the video inside your Elim. There are three methods. The first method is video by link, where you actually just create the link. So when the student click the link, the example of the link is like here. So when the student click the link, what happens is your browser will bring the student to the page directly. Okay. So how to do that? You go to, after you set your, you turn on your editing mode in your Ellipse. You go and add resources, add a URL. So after you add the URL, you can see there's a form here, the name and the external URL. So what you can do is you copy the link from your source. Okay, copy the link and then you paste it on the external URL. Then you give whatever name that you want. Because you can give some description or just directly save. So after you save, you can see the link of the video is available here. Now, some of us we may don't we may uh, we don't want the student to jump to another website. We want them to stay in Ellipse. So. What we can do is we can actually embed the video into a dashboard or we can into a file. So in here, as you see, we can actually embed the video in the dashboard, which is the first page of your uh, ellipse. And then you can play it from here. So no need to go inside the page. However, uh, previously we have some lecturers do similar things on all the classes. So if you notice that your activity in your dashboard is all across all 14 weeks unless you hide it. So if you embed your video on the dashboard like this, what happens is every time the student open up the this page, it will actually load all the video. So it will become a burden for the student to download uh, to to open. So the connection will be a bit slow. So uh, this is only when it's crucial and we are advised uh, we want to advise that only put one or two at the front page of your ellipse uh, so how to embed this video so first we will need to go to your video your youtube video you right click on the video itself you can see copy embedded code so you can copy the embedded code and if you open up a notepad the content of what you copied is similar something similar like this okay so what you need to do is you just need to put this code into your patch so how do we put it so what we do is to put it into on the first page, we're going to use a component called label. So select label, add. Now label is what you're going, what you want to display on your uh, dashboard or your dash page. So, but the problem is if you copy and paste the text the code from the uh, YouTube and you save it. You will only see the code itself. 
So what you need to do is you need to do it again add go to patch add again okay, sorry this is new patch cancel okay again go to add an activity select label add Okay, then in the label, in the uh, in the menu here, you select this particular button. This is for to open up the embedding code. For the IT lecture, I think you guys know this will be open up the HTML editor. Okay, for the the other lecturer, this will be opening up the coding uh, coding interface. No, no worry, there's no coding uh, required. You just need to copy and paste the, uh, copy and paste the, uh, the code. So we click, it's toggle on. Uh, there's no different here. Only different is you are toggle, you have uh, trigger this particular button. And then you paste the code here. Okay, now again, you save it. And return to the course. Okay, sorry, I think I forgot to edit. Uh, okay, do it again. So they did this one first. Edit. Go to label. Add. Okay, toggle the coding and then paste your code which you generate from your YouTube, the copy embedded code. Okay, then you save it. Okay, see, now you have two video here. So this is from the embedding code. So uh, because I'm having it here, if you have any technical issue, you can uh, anytime you can email me. Okay, I can try to provide my assistant to you. Okay. Now, however, when I as in the early part, we mentioned that embedding video like this, multiple video on this dash patch will actually increase the uh, network load for your student so the more video you put more slower this patch will become so how do we going to overcome this so instead of putting it on the first page what we going can do is we can actually create a patch which is the third method uh, put, embed the video by patch inside your ellipse so what do we do is similar like uh, using the label but instead of label we're going to use patch so add an activity similar. Select a patch. Okay. Just now we select label. So now we select patch. Okay. We select patch and we edit. Then we give the patch a name. new patch for video okay okay now we you can put some description down here a video for something okay however your code is not to put on here but to put on the patch content okay so do not put your code in the description, but put the code in your patch content. Similar like label, we can't actually just paste directly. We need to toggle the coding. We need to toggle the coding uh, editor. 
then we pass the code and then we save it. Okay, so what we it, what we're going to have is we have a patch. So when we click inside the patch, you can see the video. inside the patch. So this will reduce the lot. So unless the student or the participant click into the link, it won't see the video. Okay. So it will not see the video. Another good thing about this, um, this video by patch is you can actually, so I try to edit this. Okay, so you can actually put other content rather than video. You can actually make this a dedicated page. This is a tutorial video to learn HTML. Here is a coding for website. You can put your other content or your manuscript or your references inside under the or anywhere in the page. So it become a more informative uh, page rather than just showing the videos. So these are the three methods. So I'm going back to my uh, going back to the slides. So these are the three methods for you to publish lecture video in Ellipse. Then the next section is on the interaction with students. Now, uh, when we post lecture, lecture video in Ellipse or in other sharing platform, what you're going to have, is, what you're going to face, the main problem or the main challenges you're going to face is the interaction with students. Since you are only publishing a video, not a live stream uh, conference like what we're having now, you won't be able to have a live interaction with your students. So therefore, it is encouraged that you include offline, uh, you include offline uh, interaction methods for you to interact with your students. So there are several methods for us to do uh, to interact with students in online asynchronous learning. Uh, in Elip, we can actually use forum or feedback form. You can actually ask the student to provide questions or you answer their questions in a forum. Okay, I think everyone know, so I don't demo it now. Okay, and some lecture lecturer actually created a Facebook Facebook group where students can actually interact with him themselves. Uh, some even extended the group to senior. So senior can also help to answer the junior's question as well in Facebook group. Uh, for some lecturers that uh, don't mind to share their own contacts, they can actually create a WhatsApp group within the students so the student can ask questions anytime. So this is the basic uh, the interaction, the forum, feedback form, and Facebook group uh, and WhatsApp group are the common methods of how you, you provide interaction for online asynchronous learning for the students. And it will be advisable to collect all the questions and create an online FAQ, uh, frequent ask question, for the student to reference themselves without uh, asking uh, in the instructors. Uh, but of course, this will need some um, effort from the instructor to prepare the FAQ. Another method uh, to 
provide interaction to students is a delayed video uh, or a delayed interaction uh, through video. So what student can do is student can actually create a question, uh, send questions to the lecturer. And what lecturer can do is lecturer can do another video to respond to the question and to respond to uh, to provide the answers maybe with some external support like uh, images and video as well so these are the different type of interactions that uh, the lecturer can provide to the student when we're doing online uh, asynchronous learning the interaction is very important because it's the way of the student try to get hold of the answer or the to clear the confusion that they have on the content there is another um, method of interaction is by creating what we know as interactive video for uh, for the uh, students. So instead of uh, providing a, uh, providing a YouTube video only, what we can do is we can actually use this particular software. Uh, H5P, this is the name of the software, and it's actually already embedded in our Ellipse, so it's already come with the package. So we can actually use this uh, H5P to create interactive video to monitor the students uh, when they actually do the, uh, when they actually watching the videos. So one of the questions that we always ask is how do we know the student complete the video or maybe they just watch the five minutes and then that's it so how do we know the video uh, the student actually uh, complete all the videos so we can actually use this h5p interactive uh, video components which allow you to add all of these things multiple choice question free text questions uh, fill in the blank drag drop question and etc in the video and the students are required to answer the questions during the video. So I'm going to share the screen back to my uh, Google, to my Elip. So in when we want to add an activity or resource, sorry, add an activity or resource in Ellipse, you will notice that we have we have a component called interactive content. So what you can do is you can add the interactive content. I won't demo uh, due to time constraint, I won't demo all. So we can actually select different content, interactive video, course presentation. Okay, this is also another method of uh, providing online lectures. Okay. But we are concentrating on interactive video today. So uh, I'm not going to details, but I'm, make, I'm going to demo a bit on what uh, the interactive video can do. You see the small dot down here? This is actually interaction point where student, you can have, have multiple choice, add interactive video. Okay, then you go to Maybe you can watch this afterwards. You go to your ELIP, you go to H5P, uh, add the content. Uh, now, can you see the, the website? Yes, okay. So, <clears throat> play the video from the beginning. Uh, let me know if the video is not running. So this is actually from the, the website is called H5P, but you can actually link directly from your, um, so what happened is you can actually have different interaction point in the video. This can actually have marks.
So you can actually have checkpoint for the student to complete the video. So you know that if the student complete their video or not. Or not. Of course, this requires uh, more effort from the instructor to design what, how do they actually can uh, come up with the content for each of the video. So it's, it's a bit troublesome, but it will be interesting if you can do that for all your classes. So this can actually help to monitor uh, on did the student complete the video or not. And again, this is actually again this is available in your activity uh, adding activity tab where you can actually add the activities. The tutorial uh, the tutorial is available from the website uh, where you can actually view it and learn how to do it. Due to time constraint, I don't cover all of that here. Okay. Basically, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you can actually, I hope you can actually scan the survey form or uh, fit, provide feedback for the survey form. Uh, sorry for the uh, not very good presentation. Uh, I'm also first time using this, so there's a hiccup here and there. Uh, again, thank you. Are uh, any questions you want to ask? You can actually, uh, we can have a Q&A session. You can unmute your uh, mic and then you can ask your question here. I can, I will try my best to answer. The H5, uh, there's a question from uh, Miss Amy uh, on the H5 uh, P H5P is actually an online interactive um, uh, online interactive video uh, not video content creation. So it including the video and a video about presentation slide and etc. Uh, I won't ha have time to go through all the content in H5P. I also still uh, exploring on the content. Uh, you can maybe you can go to the website and then there is a, a detailed tutorial video provided. Any other questions? Any more questions? If not, then we do we will just end the session here. Enjoy. Yes. Uh, what is the best size uh, for the video to be uploaded in the ellipse? Um, question. The is uh, personally I recommend you. Uh, not upload the video in uh, Elip because Elip can only a single upload is only 800 meg for normal upload. I'm not sure if they uh, change the format or not, uh, but it's preferable if you can actually upload it in other sources and then link it over. That that will be much more better. If not, now it's the 12:15. Uh, I'm going to end the session. Okay. Thank you everyone for participating in the uh, session. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Bye, Jun Bye bye.